So in the fourth part of the series with Mike Job, he's going to discuss elephants, one of the most interesting big animals we encounter when walking in the bush. We tend to communicate a lot, show their emotions a lot. And yeah, that makes them interesting to be around. So enjoy the episode. All right. <coughs> elephants, big gray animal, white teeth. Okay. Hard, to, hard to miss them. But this applies, now even this conversation applies if you're in a vehicle. Uh, we maybe, maybe there's an assumption you're in a vehicle, elephants are safe. Or they can't hurt you. This bull elephant in this picture weighs 6.4 tons. A fully loaded Land Rover is about 4.5 tons. You know? So he's bigger than the car, he can roll it over. Okay? So it doesn't matter when you're dealing with an elephant, if you're on foot or by vehicle, you've got to be very careful. Right? They are big animals. All right? And they are very unpredictable because they have very complex social structures. They are very individualistic. They also have what we say long memories. And so their life experiences impact and determine how they respond to us. Okay. All right. And being very sentient, they're not always in one mood. Sometimes they have bad days. So whenever you're with elephants, even here in Makalali, where we spend a lot of time with them, we know the individuals, we will give them names, which some people don't necessarily agree with, it's just easy for us to monitor them. You must always respect them because they can obviously can and do potentially dangerous things. But they are very gentle animals and if, you, you know, if there's a certain amount of mutual respect and you, you can't really stay relatively safe. Saying that, if you are tracking elephants, depending on the environment, you should avoid musk bulls. If you can, musk bulls, the term means that they are testosterone is really high, they're generally the bigger bulls, they generally have, you know, they are more dominant, but their testosterone levels are raised. Um, and so they can be more t testy, more aggressive, because that's what gives them dominance to reproduce. Okay? And sometimes that frustration will be taken away from they haven't had a good, they haven't been lucky with the ladies, they haven't found them, so you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they will come and decide that they're going to vent some of that frustration out on you. Okay? So if possible, avoid them. Okay? You can tell if you're following a bull in must. Firstly, they're not always, but they're relatively large bulls. But when they're in must, they're excreting a lot of liquid out of their penis of various mixtures of stuff, urine and other man juice, which is delightful. Okay, all right, just think about it. And you can see the droplets in their, in their footprints. Okay, so you can always just take another route and go somewhere. Um, because they might come and actually cause trouble with you. Breeding herds are also very dangerous. And I say that because like we were talking about the cubs with the female elephants with their calves, and they're not only protecting their own calves, they're protecting all the calves. So you will, can get situations which can get out of control really quickly. I once did an interview with a guide and I spoke about walking and stuff and he said, don't worry, I can handle elephant herds. Okay, that was the end of the end. I, I, I was polite enough to run that for another 25 minutes, but he was never going to be employed. I said, don't have the overconfidence to tell me you can deal with a breeding herd of elephants. Just so you know, we're generally walking with about 13, 15 rounds of bullets with us at any one time. Breeding herds can be anything from our smallest herd of five in Makavali to 20 in U-boat's herd, or if they're all having a great time together, they're all together, there's 50 elephants. And so don't come with arrogance. And unfortunately, you know, the calves are also part of, uh, part of the potential heightening of a situation. The female might charge, the calf might get confidence and run past her mother, and then you're in big trouble. Because now you're closer to that cough and mom's there. Mom's going to come. All right. So I'd be, you've got to be very wary with female elephants. All right. So avoidance strategy is always the best. Unless you can observe from a really safe place. You go to a big tree to stand behind. You've got an elevated rocky position. You've got a nice river. You know, and, and I'm talking based on the environment we're in here in Makalali. We're very closed in. So if you're following elephant herds, I've been with guests who, you know, and I've been walking, following, and I can hear the elephants feeding, and I'll turn around and say, we're going no further. Certain disappointment in their faces. But I know the environment, I know where the elephants are. If we're going to get eyes on them, I'm going to have to be within 10 meters of them, and I don't want to be within 10 meters of them. You know? So you just avoid them, go somewhere else, and you just disappoint the people. Okay, but that's fine. But you can observe them safely from certain places. Right? Open environments, things like that. Um, Elephants are also very, very animated animals. They, 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 they give you a lot of, I don't know, if you can read them, you can, you can see quite quickly. One of the fruits, not always, okay, and also remember when I say these things, elephants don't go through 
They don't always go through the nice softy, softy parts before they get angry. Okay, they can go into a real charge straight away, and that can happen. You might just suddenly see an elephant, and they come. Just remember, it can be a real charge. But often when an elephant's unsure of a situation, you watch, especially on a vehicle, you watch them, and like their toes will lift on a foot, maybe the front foot, they lift their toes up, or they lift a leg, and the legs start to rock. This is like most of you looking at me, going, oh my God, he's speaking with an accent. You know, you can't hear, you can't, I don't understand what I'm saying. All right? Um, it's just scratching the head, going, fuck, is that like speaking English, you know? It's the same with the elephant, he's rocking his leg. <laughs> also watch their trunks. Trunks are amazing things, over 100,000 individual muscles, whatever, 150,000. And they move around a lot to feed, but when they, they're getting a bit curious on you or not sure, they'll start to, I've seen it often, they're feeding and then they stop dropping the food. They're pretending, they're going, I'm eating this stupid thing, thinks I'm eating. But he's dropping the food. He's, all his focus is on you, or she, her foot. And they're not, they're just dropping the food. Also, when they stop doing that, then they start to poke it at you. It almost feels like this weird periscope. And they're basically trying to smell you. They understand the environment by smell. So they, a lot by, so they're pulling in your smell. They're looking, they basically, it feels like they're looking at you. Their trunk goes and pokes at you and you're just smelling you. I think they also learn your scent. They know you as an individual over time. So that's why we talk to them. And they're smelling and then he understands a bit more. He might put the smell in the mouth, activate the Jacobson organ, get a bit better understanding. Or he might smell something he doesn't like, or he might smell that you're an arsehole, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. <laughs> I've got stories about them and their smell. It's quite interesting. But this is, an, this is an elephant uncertain or curious and interested. If they, get, if they get nervous, then they present. And what they do is they lift up their heads and they turn and face the danger and they put their ears up. You know, if you imagine a six-ton elephant now lifting his head up. So his shoulder height's four meters. He puts his head up, it goes to five meters or more. And he puts his ears up. He presents massive. You know, and he's basically saying, look, I'm big. Bugger off. And then the elephant shakes their head. When the elephant shakes their head, it's a serious warning. The elephant's saying, go away. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like you. It's, just, it's a serious warning. Come at you with a warning charge. Warning charge, the elephant will either have his head raised up, you know, ears might be spread, might be running and kicking out the sand. You might even get to the point where he's trumpeting. He's trying to intimidate the crap out of you. Okay? And so if this is the elephant comes, he's presenting large, he's shaking his head around and he's and he's looking, you know, his trunk is sort of moving. He's coming to scare you. You stand your ground. Like a lion, you stand there, you put your arm up and say, Hey, hey boy, we, we cool, don't be like that. And I think we talk about it a lot. How you project to them is also how they're going to respond to you. And you could also wonder if you want to, you want to re respond like for like. So if they're coming with just like a run and the head comes up, don't yell at them. Because you're just maybe heightening the situation. If they trumpet, trumpet back. Just say, hey, give them a voice, you know, whatever it is. And then you might look at you, I've done something wrong. Okay, I'll say he here yeah, because this doesn't work with the girls so much. Eh? Um, but you can be in a situation where that charge from a warning charge turns into a real charge or it's just a real charge. And it is very difficult. A real charge, an elephant will decide he's coming or she'll decide she's coming. What happens is watch that trunk. The trunk will go out and it will get into, into the chest. That elephant's head will drop. The trunk will be protected. The elephant doesn't want to damage its trunk, so it will put it underneath into the chest. And the head will go down and they just run at you. There's no performance, there's none of that crap. That's when your point of safety, your rocks, your tree, or sadly your rifle, is what you use. Okay, and then you shoot. And you, you better make that decision quickly. All right, because almost never in a real charge are they going to break. Okay.